In the past several years, we have seen the rise of creative hardware effects. For example, there is the microcosm. There's also the space spiral, which is a modulated delay effect. And this... And also this. These amazing pedals have sparked many musicians' creativity, and they may have even inspired you to want to make a custom effect of your own. A unique idea that exists only in your head that's waiting to be brought into the physical world. But how do we even get started? I mean, the level of entry seems a bit high though, right? Electronics look pretty complicated, PCB design seems a bit daunting, and what parts should we even buy first? Even for people with experience building musical hardware, it's a lot of time and resource commitment to build a working prototype. So it'll be nice to have something that can let us quickly try out an idea for a hardware effect. And this is where Daisy Pa comes in. Whether you want to get into the world of musical hardware design, or you're an expert who wants a solid prototype platform to try out an idea quickly, Pod is for you. So for a beginner, starting out the development journey while simultaneously learning about both hardware and software seems tough. Let's at least get a taste of developing just with audio programming in the beginning. Pod can help you start audio programming without breadboarding. So after programming an effect, we just shove that program into this and immediately start playing around with sound using physical controls such as potentiometers, switches, and an encoder. It also consists of RGB LEDs, stereo line ins and outs, headphone jack, and MIDI in. So even for experienced music hardware developer, these features are very convenient to have when trying out an idea quickly. DZPod is $84, and we can transform it into an ambient effects unit, or the most chaotic distortion, and everything in between. Pod is part of Electrosmith's Daisy lineup. At the heart of these products, there's Daisy Seed. It's like an Arduino, but we can do audio programming and put that code inside of it. This is called embedded audio programming. And we can connect a bunch of electronics components like sensors, buttons, and etc. and control sound parameters with them. For example, with the Daisy Seed, I built this portable synth that I can play with a ribbon sensor and distance sensor. We could develop hardware effects with just Daisy Seed, but if you just want to get started with audio programming right away, Daisy Pop may be what you're looking for. Like, if we try to recreate something like the pod starting with just the Seed and breadboard or PCB, it can get pretty hefty, even for an expert. We gotta find TRS jacks with the appropriate impedance, build a headphone amp, connect all the potentiometers, encoder, LEDs, and etc. While it is rewarding to build stuff from scratch with the Daisy Seed, it's really nice to have a solid pre-built hardware no matter what level you're at, especially if you're just getting started. With Pod, for example, beginners can learn how to program and map hardware controls to synth parameters right away. But what's even the point of embedded audio anyway? Can we just program an effect on our laptop and control that with a MIDI controller? Yeah, that's perfectly valid to do. That being said, there are benefits to using embedded audio. I list them off in this video and I can provide a condensed version of it right now. One big reason is that we don't need a laptop once the program is embedded into DAISY. And this leads to a bunch of benefits. First of all, no distractions. Also, quicker setup time. Just connect the power source like a portable phone charger, and we're done. Finally, we can commit to an idea. If the adjustable parameters are always in front of us on our laptop, we're constantly tempted to adjust them. So, embedded audio can free us from endless adjustments. Okay, we're gonna go through the process of turning this blank pod into an ethereal hardware effects unit. Our goal is to connect the Korg Minilog and create ambient music. Let's get started. Quick disclaimer, Electrosmith did send the pod over, so this video is sponsored in that aspect. But I didn't ask anything more for this review. Thanks Electrosmith for the support, and thank you for watching. In terms of the hardware, we pretty much have everything we need just with the pod. That's mainly the point of it. But we do also need stereo TRS cables like this one, USB cable, and a power source such as a portable USB battery. Yes, Pod can be powered when it's connected to a laptop, but
but laptop USB power is noisy. So once the programming is done, it's much better to power DAISY with something like a portable phone charger. And I'm going to assume that you have an audio interface. It may be a hardware synth or a guitar with a DI to play the effects with. By the way, because Pod has MIDI in, we can turn it into a standalone hardware synth that can be played with a MIDI keyboard. But that's a separate video. It's also worth noting that you can insert an SD card, which could be used for granular effects. Okay, let's move on to programming. In this video, we're gonna audio program with Pure Data, which is a visual programming language where we pretty much connect boxes together to create a synth or an effect in this case. For some people, it's a lot more approachable than text-based programming. I'll include a link to the example files in the description. And of course, there are other languages that we can use. After downloading Pure Data, which is free by the way, the next step is to install all the necessary software for embedding Pure Data Patcher into DAISY. So just recently, the PD to DAISY GUI came out. It should be a lot more approachable than using a terminal. I'll be making a dedicated video on it in the near future. In the meantime, we can follow the direction on this page. Let's just use the example patcher that it comes with and learn how pod works. Before we click the flash program button to embed the example pure data patcher into pod, we have to press hold boot, then also press hold reset. After that, let go of reset, and finally let go of boot. We have to do this every time we want to embed a patcher into DAISY. I'll admit that this step is a bit tedious, but ST-Link makes this step obsolete. I'll talk more about it in the upcoming setup and embedding tutorial. And the synth should be inside of DAISY now. Okay, but what do we even put inside of it? Let's actually open this patcher on our laptop. Here we have two separate oscillators, one for the left channel and the other for the right channel. And this R knob 1 is mapped to this knob right here and it outputs 0.0, .0 to 1.0. So the pitch of the left oscillator is mapped to the hardware knob on the left. And the button is mapped to an envelope generator. It's also mapped to this LED right here. Let's play around to confirm this. Same thing for the other oscillator pretty much. Okay, we're going to look at a separate example patcher to learn how the encoder works. Here's something I put together quickly. So the encoder outputs positive 1 when we twist it clockwise. Encoders click when they're twisted, which we can hear and feel. So for each click in the clockwise direction, this R encoder will output positive 1 once. And it's negative 1 in the counterclockwise direction. So we can put together a set of objects like this. and we can map it to a synth parameter. For example, we can map the encoder to a pitch frequency. Pressing down on the encoder will reset the pitch frequency back to 440 Hz. One final thing to learn about pod is the RGB LED. We can set the LED to different colors. So here's a red LED turning on and off. And here's an LED that's switching between blue and green. We can also change the brightness to create all kinds of colors. RGB LEDs can be super useful. Some of you may be thinking that two potentiometers and an encoder are not enough. So to get more out of these three controls, we can use RGB LEDs to switch between modes. For example, let's say we made an effect that consists of a resonant low-pass filter and delay. Just for example, knob 1 controls the input level and knob 2 controls the output level. So how could we control multiple parameters with just one encoder? We can switch between modes. When LED1 is green, it's in the filter mode where we can control parameters of a filter with the encoder. And when it's blue, we're in the delay mode. As for LED2, it's used to switch between which parameter is being controlled with the encoder. 
So for example, with LED1 green and LED2 also green, the encoder is mapped to the cutoff frequency in this mode. And when we switch LED2 to blue, we can control the resonance of the filter. As for the delay mode, which again is LED1 being blue, we can switch between controlling the delay time and feedback. I'll leave the patch analysis up to you in order to make this video not too long nor boring. It mainly just consists of several gay objects, which you can learn from this tutorial if you need a refresher. Okay, it's time to put together an ambient effects unit. I'll be right back. It looks messy, but it's actually pretty simple. This patch consists of a combination of delay, filter, and other effects. I'm using LFOs to modulate the parameters to create a more animated soundscape. For example, there are filters with LFOs attached for auto-sweeping. It's worth noting that I'm using pre-built patchers, which I'll credit and add a link to them below. Finally, I map the hardware controls to few of the effect parameters. For something that I put together super quickly, I think it demonstrates a bit of what Daisy Pod is capable of. It can do way more than this for sure. The idea here with something like the Daisy Pod is finding unique and interesting ways to combine all of these pre-existing effects. For example, Hologram Electronics didn't invent granular synth, pitch modulation, resonant low-pass filter, nor delay when building the microcosm. What they successfully did is figuring out a unique combination of these pre-existing effects and also creating a user interface that simply worked well. So for developers who are prototyping a potential product, I think it's okay to use and combine pre-built algorithms to come up with a solid idea that you can commit to. Then later on in the development, that's when you build an original algorithm more from scratch. If you're more of a musician, you can just focus on making interesting music by combining pre-built effects in unique ways. Either way, Daisy Pod would be great for putting together ideas that you can try out quickly. If you're interested in embedded audio, it could be more convenient to start with the Daisy Pod. As soon as the software setup is complete, we can start audio programming right away. I would personally use it for prototyping mainly, but I could also see myself 3D printing an enclosure for it and have it in my studio to make music with it or even play live shows. And it could be a portable effect for a synth like the OP-1 or something more affordable. So if you're interested in getting into the world of embedded audio, but not quite ready to dive into electronics just yet, I highly recommend checking out the Daisy Pod. Thank you for watching.